There's a saying in the business world, um, maybe not honestly the business world, it's just the world in general, and that is that the customer is always right. And anytime I hear that, the interesting thing is it's usually from somebody who has never run a business because they haven't had to deal with trolls and fraud and disputes and asshole customers that suck the life out of you and your team like a vacuum at a confetti party. And if you've been in business for even a minute, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. While customers get a choice, they get a choice in who they buy from and who they get service from, so do you. You actually have a choice in who you work with. And I think a lot of times we just forget about that because we're so busy worrying about, hey, how do I get the customer, get the customer, get the customer. But over time, we build this culture of horrible customers that just suck the life out of us, out of our team, and out of our morale. And over the last 10 years, as our company has grown, we have for sure encountered our fair share of assholes, trolls, chargebacks, payment disputes, and everything in between with the nasty emails, the phone calls, the just you name it, we have experienced that. You probably have too. They suck the life out of your team. And it's very easy to become discouraged and, and put you in a negative headspace. And I try to imagine like, hey, if I was at a confetti party and uh, we had all this, this joy glitter, just happiness all over the place. We're scattered on the floor. We're excited about the future and about the vision. And then you have these assholes that come in and they are like a relentless vacuum that just sucks up every bit of joy, every bit of the fun sparkle until there's nothing left except this dull, crappy carpet. And so we have a simple rule in our business, and that is no assholes allowed. And people who do those things fall into that category. Now, real quick, you're probably wondering, Josh, why are you swearing on this episode? You're not somebody that generally swears. Well, as we talked about it, I gotta be honest, um, I was on the edge of even using the word asshole in this episode, but our team discussed there are sometimes words that describe certain things or people that you can't get around because assholes be assholes and jerks are not the same. You have a jerk and you have an asshole, two different people. You have meanie heads and you have assholes, two different people. And so there are certain words that we can't get around. So I just wanna throw this up front and let you know uh, the reason we are gonna be having maybe the little explicit on this episode here is just simply because there are people that fall into these categories and we gotta call them what they are. And I think it's only fair because they call us every name under the sun. And so this concept of uh, no assholes allowed was actually sparked by a book I read, it was probably five, six years ago. It was called The No Asshole Rule. And I read this book and we basically adopted this philosophy on a few levels. First, internally with our team. So you can't come into our team and be an asshole and stay on our team. And if we missed it in the interview hiring process, that's on us, we'll own it, but we will still, you probably won't last very long. The second level we use this is externally. This is with clients and customers who buy your stuff. Uh, this is email subscribers. This is social media followers and so on. And so what we do is the same, but how we do it will change a bit based on the platform that they're being an asshole on. And so what I wanna cover in this episode, this is gonna be a little bit different episode. I'm actually excited to share this because um, I've never seen a system like we've created. I couldn't find anything on it. And all of these years, we've had so many internal conversations of like, how do we just block these people? How do we not work with these people? What are the procedures? How do we do it? Why do we do it? Should we do it? How do we enforce it? What are the ramifications of that? And we never had an answer. So what we decided to do was just go out and create the system. So I'm gonna cover why we blacklist assholes from ever being able to buy from us, download from us, or engage with us. So I'm gonna cover why we do it and why you should consider doing it how our blacklist system works. I'm gonna walk you through the, the, the conditions that you'll, you, you'll have to think through. I'm gonna walk through how we enforce it. That's the other thing. How do you actually enforce it? And then I'll close out with, hey, what we've seen since implementing it as a whole. So first, 
what type of asshole are we dealing with? And we kind of have two categories here. And uh, in the book, The No Asshole Rule, go read it, it's a fantastic book. And in it, it's, it's primarily around company culture and team culture and building a team on that premise. But there are two types that he talks about in the book and it makes a lot of sense. You have temporary assholes and you have certified assholes. So a temporary asshole is someone that is just temporarily being one. Sometimes it's you. And this is where like we all have bad days, we, we, we behave poorly every now and then, and a temporary asshole might have just had a rough morning. It happens to all of us, we don't all have perfect days. And so the temporary asshole, like on occasion, it could be you, it could be uh, someone in your team, maybe your number two could be that person. They might send an email, it might be a customer where uh, they receive their package and it, it arrives broken, right? So they send an email, they're really upset, rightfully so, about their, their, their packaging arriving and the product being broken, and then you hop on it. You tell them, hey, we're so sorry, uh, our apologies, we're gonna go ahead and replace it, no cost to you, we're even gonna priority ship it, because obviously you go above and beyond for your customers, and then they're happier than like a bird with a french fry. Maybe not that happy, but they're pretty happy, And but they usually say something along the lines of just, hey, thank you, appreciate it, and then they move on. Those are temporary. And then you have the next level. And this whole system, our blacklisting system, is built for certified assholes. So the certified sort is, is those that behave badly consistently. And it doesn't matter whether maybe it's not his or her day. Maybe the day isn't terrible. It's just an intentional outpouring of hate and anger and condescension and bad juju is what I would probably call it. So where they might send an email, they may have had the package arrived and the product is broken, right? They send an email and they're upset about it arriving broken, rightfully so. Then you hop to it, you tell them we're sorry, uh, we apologize, we're gonna go ahead and replace it and we're gonna overnight the shipping because we go above and beyond. But instead of saying thank you, it's not enough for them. And they reply with how ashamed you should be of yourself and how you shouldn't be in business. And not only should you send them that and overnight it, but you need to refund their purchase and send two just in case one of them gets lost. And they tell you, you should not be in business. You should never have started. And you're the scum scams of the world. And then when you politely tell them you can't do that, they fire back asking what kind of business you run. And you're a scam artist, you're out taking their money and every time I bought something off of Facebook, it's because a scam artist like you and they threaten to leave bad reviews and then they threaten your children and your family, future generations and then they're gonna curse them and all these kinds of things. And so we've all had people uh, do that, right? And so uh, we've had people that respond to, and I'll just give you an example here, of, of non-customers, so this, this sometimes will happen where your, li your email list starts to grow. And let's say you send out regular emails. We used to have this guy <laughs> that would, um, every email that we sent, he would just look for grammatical and spelling errors in the email. If we missed a, a comma, or we title case something improperly, or we uh, used a wrong use case of a word, or, or, he, or it was grammatically incorrect, he would reply to the email, just to let us know how unprofessional we were and that we wouldn't have our content audited before we sent out the emails. So eventually we decided, you know what? We'll go ahead and there's an unsubscribe button at the bottom, but you don't do it. So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna unsubscribe you. So no matter what, you can't avoid these people. They will mathematically show up at your doorstep, especially as your business starts to grow. And so the simple test for a certified asshole, this is the simple test. If after talking to the alleged asshole, does the target of the asshole feel oppressed, humiliated, de-energized, or belittled by the person? Does the target feel worse about themselves from the interaction with that person? If yes, you might have a certified asshole on your hands. And so the question is, what do you start to do? So why we do this comes back to just some simple math. Uh, in the book, he had some great studies and I wanna just pull like two things that were interesting in here. The first thing he talked about was that they did a research and they found that negative interactions with 
Others had a 500% higher impact on the victims than positive interactions with others. So people are five times more impacted by negative than good. And for an organization with a thousand workers, I know that's not most of us listening, including myself, the cost can be nearly $2 million annually just in personnel replacement costs because people leave when they're treated like that and they feel the company doesn't have their back. From a more tangible standpoint, if you run a business or you have a customer service team of any kind, then you know how draining it is. And maybe you don't have like a thousand person company, but you, you know how much it just gets in your headspace and you feel a little bit trapped sometimes. Like think of your, 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 your team or your employees, right? If you have someone that you have hired to do your support and they're just taking a beating from customers in the customer service department, they're taking a beating from people all the time. There are some that like, hey, it's temporary. You kind of solve it. You're there to problem solve. It's always usually, it's cost, you're supporting because they're what you're, you're reacting to a situation that happened. That, that's very natural. But then there's people that beat them down so hard. And if you don't have their back and you don't step in to say like, hey, at some point, we will just never sell to that person again. We will not let them in our system again. Then you're gonna start to experience this, this turnover in your company. And so like you never want, if you never want to sell to that person or you don't want them getting emails or having access to you, I'm sure like if you were right now, if you said, hey, Josh, I'm going to spend 10 seconds and I'm going to list off anyone who comes to mind that might fall in that category. You probably have 10 to 20 of those people right now that in the last month have engaged with you that you're like, ooh, what? Who like pooped in your suit? Because like, dude, you were, you were relentless and you will not let up. And so if, you, if you're in that, that situation and maybe you're, you're resonating with this and you're like, holy crap, Josh, I have experienced some of those types of people in my life and business. Um, and if not, then you probably haven't been, been in business long enough, but let me tell you something, it's coming. And if you're in that situation, I would like to introduce you to something we call the blacklist. I know, super fancy, and it's kind of like a, it's kind of like the, every time I hear the word blacklist, by the way, I think of that TV show, The Blacklist, fantastic, Raymond Redding, Redding, uh, <laughs> Reddington, okay. Anyway, so with The Blacklist, it's pretty simple. Here's how it works. Regardless of the channel the asshole is on, like it could be a customer, it could be an ad comment, it could be social, it could be your email list, it could be a Facebook group you have, et cetera. Regardless of the channel, they get evaluated through their interaction with whoever oversees that channel. So if you have someone who manages your social or someone who manages your, um, your email ticket support, you have someone who manages your ad comments, et cetera, because by the way, we get them in ad comments as well. And those people have the right to make the decision. And if that person is deemed a certified asshole status, we enact a series of automations and we put a few things in place to ensure that they never receive an email from us, they can't get back on our list, they can't purchase another product from us, they are removed from our Facebook group, banned, and they cannot find it in the future, and they also cannot find our fan pages again in case they wanna just continue this carnage that they are out to seek just for no reason. So once that, that big red asshole button is pressed behind the scenes, we have a couple of manual tasks, but we also have plenty of automations to kind of run this process of our blacklist. And once someone's on the blacklist, they're on the blacklist. Um, and if, you, if you've seen uh, an ad from us in the future, for example, or organically, and let's say somebody gets on the blacklist, and then later they see an ad because that happens, right? So you might put someone on your blacklist. You're like, I don't ever want to talk to you again. And then they go, they see the ad and they click on the ad and they get your, they join your free giveaway or, or they, they click on your website and they join your welcome offer, right? And so now they would get emails from you. So if they or interact, whether organically or paid ads with us in the future, and they try to get like a free download, for example, it won't send to them. If they try to purchase our merchant processors and we use Stripe, Payments AI and PayPal, they will decline the transactions associated with their cards that we have on file or the associated email that we have on file. So they can't use any of the cards that they've used in the past with us and they can also not ever check out with the same email with us. And if they do happen to make it through and it ends up matching with another profile that we have on the blacklist in the future, their purchase is immediately refunded and they receive a templated email stating why they're being refunded. Now, like I said, I've never found anything 
on this, let alone a process to follow. So um, hopefully you find this valuable. Maybe at this point you're like, Josh, how the heck do you guys do all this? I'll tell you what, um, I'm gonna share you, I'm gonna share with you ours and what that looks like. Uh, but first I wanna address the question that you might be asking, and that is, Josh, doesn't this just mean you're holding a grudge and you're being mean to people? Aren't you supposed to love people? And honestly, that was the first question that I had to ask myself. Because for years, like we use this rule in our company, the no assholes allowed rule, it applied only internally for like our team. We just wanted, we wanted a culture and to control that culture, to minimize turnover and to build momentum, you have to take care of your people. And so if we had a team member and we had a couple of them over the years that kind of footed that bill, they were usually fired and not let back into our company. We'd be dumb to let them back into our company, right? Well, I, I guess if you look at it, we've been having a blacklist on the internal company side, uh, since we ever fired people, because we would not hire them back. Knowing what we know about them now, we would not hire them back. And so when we started discussing the idea of, should we build a blacklist for our company, uh, like as a whole, I had to ask myself like, is this just Josh holding a grudge and being mean? Because you know, deep down, vulnerably in your mind, you're like, I wanna do this just to spite them <laughs> because they're the worst. And I just wanna have like the, the final moment of like pressing the blacklist asshole button that just does all these things. And then there's just like this, ah, uh, the satisfaction of being able to do that. So selfishly in the back of your mind, you wanna do it already. But the, the question is, does that make it right? Is it because you're holding a grudge or is it being mean? And so as we kind of sat down and we, we analyzed it, we were kind of vulnerable and honest about it. Here's, here's what I arrived at. At the end of the day, my priority is my people, our team, our brand, our culture, and by the way, our clients and customers who love us and who we love. Not the assholes that drain our energy, get in our headspace, and could continue to do so down the line because Here's what we've seen, like we have repeat offenders. We've had, well, now we don't, but we had repeat offenders where they would come in or they would send us nasty emails and blah, blah, blah. We wouldn't do anything and guess what? We would find them popping up in our Facebook group and causing trouble over here. And then they would be having issues texting our sales team and then they would start commenting on our ads. And it was just like all over the place. And it's like, they're going to pop up down the line. If you don't deal with it now, th there is a probability they will do so down the line. Now, some of them, they just say, you're the worst, F you, blah, 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 blah. And then they never talk to you again. Great, those are the, the certified that they move on. But they're certified for a reason. You know, we call them certified because they are relentless in degrading, belittling, and making you feel like you are the worst person in the world. And so my vision for our company is massive. And I don't know about you, but as in like, for, for me, one day, the e-commerce alley will have millions of subscribers between YouTube and our email list. We're gonna host the most incredible live events around the world. We're gonna have the largest community of e-commerce brands. And, and my vision is that every e-commerce business that launches is gonna be lined to learn from us and to work with us. I know, we have super big lofty uh, vision. But at, the, at that point, I want as many assholes weeded out as possible. So our events, our comment sections, and our communities are filled with nothing but the best humans on the planet. Very lofty goal, I know. Uh, <laughs> but just like those people have a choice in who they follow and subscribe and buy from, we also as business owners have a choice in who we keep within our ecosystem. And so I wanna overview what our system looks like. I'm gonna get paint the picture and kind of show you some of the things that if you're like, I wanna create one of these, I don't know what it looks like from a picture. I'm gonna kind of show you what this looks like from like a bigger picture and some of the contingencies you might need to, to plan for because we have worked through the contingencies and fixed most all of the contingencies. And if something pops up, we go and we just fine tune it even more. But what I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna get into like the nitty gritty details of like, hey, here's how every single, this software integrates with this software, integrates with this, this software, and you have to zap it over here, and then this is gonna happen, because you can kind of figure all that stuff out on your own. Like the first step is just outline the plan, and the second step is set up the system and automate as much as possible. 
So when we sat down to create this process, I'm like, okay, we got to look at this from a couple, a couple perspectives. Um, number one, what are the crimes that warrant the blacklist? What are the crimes, right? And then number two, what are the, what is the punishment <laughs> that fits the crime? And then uh, number three, how do we enforce it? Because that's the hard thing. How do you enforce the punishment? of the crime, that's that's where we all get kind of tripped up, right? So there are some things that we have put in place to make this possible. And some of it is a little manual, but it doesn't take very long. And it's not like we do this every single day, by the way. You know, we have days and weeks that we do more than others, but for the most part, it's not like we're, we're, we're blacklisting like 25 people a day. So this isn't a crazy amount or 100 people a day. I mean, this isn't a crazy amount of work, but the payoff that we've seen has actually been good. I'll talk about that in a moment. So here are the crimes. For us, there are actually three crimes for the blacklist. And I've been talking about assholes, um, but all of these classify. And your, yours might be different. So you have to choose, number one, what are, your cri what are the crimes that you think a punishment should go to uh, if you are the judge and the jury? Um, number one, is defaulting on a payment plan and ghosting us. That's number one. So in our, our business, we have payment plans. Sometimes we'll like spread things out, we'll help people out. We, we always go the extra mile. We always put ourselves in their shoes and we wanna work with and help people. And so we'll go that extra mile. So that's defaulting on a payment plan. Uh, that's the first thing. And then if they ghost us and there's no response. The second thing is if there is a chargeback or a dispute. So chargebacks and disputes. If somebody buys something from you and they charge it back or they dispute it, that's a, that's a flag, like that's a crime to us. And sometimes there's misunderstandings and we always try to figure it out. But some people, they just wanna take advantage of you. They just come in, they charge it back, they dispute it, and then they just say, hey, I never received it. And they're just cold hearted liars because you certified it and you know that they received it. <laughs> and you can see that it arrived. <laughs> but anyway, that's number two. And the third one is just being a certified asshole. That's it. Like you don't have to buy from us to be classified as that. So the first two are if you bought from us and you're a customer, the last one is at our discretion. If you are just the crime is, sorry, you're certified. You're certified, baby. We're getting you out of here. You're making on the blacklist if it's one of those three things. And we always, in everything, try to approach it with love and understanding and the benefit of the doubt. We always do that first. But eventually, those crimes are committed and there's no, re there, there's no reconciliation. <laughs> and then at that point, you gotta say, crime committed, what is the punishment? You get on the blacklist. Now, what does that actually look like? So for us, we have a list of what we do and what happens to fit the crime. Now, they all basically get the same punishment, but those are the three crimes that warrant the same punishment. Here are the punishments. Number one, they are kicked out of our, kicked out of and banned from the e-commerce alley Facebook group. It's a growing group. We do, we offer a lot of value in there. Sorry, you're not going to sit in our community if that's the case. That's where our community is. So, so for us, that makes sense. Some, some of you listening, you might have a Facebook group. You might need to do that. Most, I would say, don't have a Facebook group. So you may not have to even worry about that. So they're kicked out of the group. They are unsubscribed from all lists. And there's a tagging system we do, so they get tagged as it. So they're unsubscribed from all lists. They are blocked on our payment processors. So again, that's going to help us not get purchases from them. Uh, they are not ever able to purchase from us ever again. That's a punishment. They are not able to access any free content from us, and they are not able to access any paid content from us. So we have six punishments for the crime. You might, you have people that come into your system and they might just get free stuff from you. They might join your email list and they might join a giveaway or something like that. You could block the free people and you can also block the, the people that actually want to buy from you. And most people don't know this, but you can actually, uh, you can just Google it, how to block certain customers that are in your system from being able to buy from you, again, based on their payment methods and their email. And so you can do that. It takes like 10 seconds. <laughs> so it's this is not a lot, lot of manual work when, once you, you, you get really going on this. Uh, so here's how we do this. So to enact the punishments and automate as much, there, there's some like manual steps and then a lot of automations are right. So we, we do three steps. So step number one, we tag them with the crime. So if you have an email tool, for example, you probably have the ability to create tags. We have three tags, blacklisted, colon, chargeback, blacklisted, colon, default, defaulting on payments, blacklisted, colon, asshole. We have three crimes and three tags. And then what happens is, 
If anyone gets tagged, and the reason, by the way, we delineate between the crimes is because we might blacklist somebody who does one of those three things, but they come back and they reconcile with us. But the one thing we will not let back is an asshole. So if we specify the differences in these, and let's say someone like charged us back, right? They charged back an order that we know they received. And it was just, they just didn't recognize the name on their credit card statement. Like that's very common. That's a very common thing. Like, hey, it happens, right? And then they come back and they're like, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do that, but it's too late. I, is there anything I can do? Like, so some people come back and they try to reconcile and try to make things right. And in that case, guess what? If they were a chargeback, we just remove the tag and we throw them back in our system. But if they are blacklisted and it is asshole, sorry, hey, we understand, we get it. You're not getting back in our system. So what happens is we tag them and then an automation runs that will unsubscribe them from all lists. That's the second thing. So step one, we run, we, run, uh, we tag them. And then what happens is step number two is it will then run an automation that will remove them from all of our email lists, text lists, et cetera, and tag them and add them to a black list. So we see that number like slowly growing as time goes on. So we know how many people are in our black list. And we can also go in there and quickly search someone's name if we need to. And then the third thing we do is we just manually block them on payment processors and from our group. So we tag them, that's a little manual. It, it doesn't take very long though. If you're in like a customer support tool, you can also like automate that too, where from the, the, if you're like using, we use a tool called front, front.com. It's a pretty great tool. So from it, we could have a tag in there. And if it tags it, you could have, you could use integrations that will like zap it or shoot it over to your email tool. And then it like runs the whole thing, right? The only other thing we have to do is manually block them under payment processors and from our group. Doesn't take a very long time to do it. If someone is managing the ad comments and we have those people, guess what? It's pretty easy to just ban them so they can never see your ads again. That's a really easy process. This is a little bit more, um, a little bit longer process. To, to engage in. So the next question is like, how do we, so we, we have the crimes, we have the punishments, and then we have to enforce it. So how do we enforce it? Well, they cannot access any free stuff from us. Now this may not apply as much to you, but for us, we have like eBooks and trainings and welcome offers, et cetera. So we have free stuff that they could come and just get back on the list and start getting. But what happens is we have a, a blacklister automation setup, we use active campaign for email marketing, by the way, and you can set this up to where if somebody is tagged with a blacklist uh, tag, what happens is if they try to get in any other automations for any free stuff that we have, they don't even get into it. It sucks them through this automation and this automation exits them from all other automations. So even if they join the list, it will, before they even get that first thank you email or welcome offer email, it pulls them over and it unsubscribes them from all lists again, just to make sure they didn't get on a different list. And then it exits all other automations. So they won't even get the thank you email. So like, for example, if they try to join your pop-up and you have a blacklist automation, uh, what's gonna happen is they're not gonna automatically receive any emails from you. Like normally it would put them into the welcome flow, right? Well, what this would do was this yanks them from the welcome flow. So they can't even go into it because they have that filter, because they have that tag on it. But sometimes they'll email directly and they're gonna ask like, hey, why didn't I get the email? You know what we do? We tell them. <laughs> well, no, we don't call them an asshole, but we tell them, hey, listen, um, hey, we appreciate that you wanted to download this. We appreciate that you wanted to, and we have a template for this, so it doesn't take us any time at all. We appreciate that you wanted to download this. Unfortunately, uh, we don't think that we're the best to work with you or serve you uh, just based on past interactions. That's it. Sorry, can't do that. So no free stuff. So there are two levels you have to think about this. There's free stuff, and then people cannot buy from you. So uh, you have free stuff and you have paid stuff. If they come back, there are kind of two situations. This is where it got a little tricky for us because some people that get blacklisted are on your email list or just doing free stuff, right? They've never bought from you yet. So they could technically, so because they've never bought, you can't, um, you can't block them on your payment processor because they've never purchased from you. So they can still come and they can still purchase from you in the future. So there are two contingencies that's gonna happen. If you blacklist someone and they are, they're, they're gonna be an existing customer already or they're not. If they're an existing customer, you can block their payment methods. And then what happens is they won't be able to complete a payment if they use the card on file or the email that we have on file, because it was one of those, one of those three steps is we block their, if they're existing customer, we block their payments from coming through. That's the easy one. The harder one is, well, what happens if they're like, just they're like that guy that would just email and call us out on how unprofessional we were because we had grammar and spelling and we missed a period or we missed a comma here. And he just wanted to just 
be certified to be certified, right? So you have those people, but they've never bought and they can still come and buy because you can't block them on your payment processor. So, so here's how it works. If they're blacklisted and then they come and they buy, we have an automation and here's what it does. They, they get through, they're able to place their purchase because we can't block them beforehand. So they come through, they place their order with our merchant processor and instantaneously our team, our support gets notified. We get notified in Slack and we get notified by email. And then what happens is, as soon as the first person gets to it from support, we refund their payment and we then email the blacklister and let them know it happened and, then, and why we did it. And then we block their payment method moving forward so they can no longer try to purchase anything even with a different card or e as long as it's tied to that email or that card, they won't be able to purchase again. And then of course, we send them, send them the templated email letting them know that they've been blacklisted. We don't, we don't call it blacklisting. We just say we're not the best fit to work with you. <laughs> so if they make it through, guess what we do? Hey, you know what? We have a rule here. No assholes allowed. Refunded. Then we go and we block it on the merchant processor. Now, how this will work for you, it might look a little bit different, um, but if you get these repeat offenders that just suck the life out of you and you wanna create a system to never work with them again or, or talk to them again, I highly recommend considering a blacklist. And, and so when we, when we rolled this out, I was curious to know, like, like how do you measure if people are coming back uh, or if it was just a lot of work to set this all up for nothing, right? Because we could set this all up and just never know. We could say, hey, you'll never be able to buy from us again. You'll never be able to download from us again. We're not gonna work with you. We're washing our hands. You have been written out of our will, right? If we were to say that, how do we know how many people are actually coming back? You really, it's kind of hard to, right? So what we did was we sat down and we said, okay, well, we wanna measure this and see how often do blacklisters or how often do these people try to actually come back. And what's interesting is they do. So we set up an automation to let us know every time a blacklister comes back to download or purchase something. And when they do, our team gets notified that a blacklister tried to get back in the castle and then we just chuckle and move on. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> so we get these people get we get notified when people do this. We get an email every time someone tries to buy something that was on the blacklist, we refund and we follow this process. And so we chuckle a little bit, we move on. But for me, so, so we have this happen every single week. But from, and it's only gonna compound over time as we grow and as our brand grows, like sorry, we are trying to cleanse this of the chaff of the world that are trying to bring everybody, bring all the other crops down that are trying to sprout good stuff here, right? And so for me, the real metric of success is when someone on our team who has been taking a beating from a grade A certified asshole gets to make the decision to press the big red button that triggers this entire system and put those kinds of people on our blacklist. That is it for me. When I, when I get to see that, because when our team is getting belittled and degraded and treated like crap, my people are my priority. Our Clients that love us are my priority, not these certified assholes that are coming to suck the life out of everything. Now, in all of this, I, I wanna be very fair and just say that, just so you know, like, we're not out to get people, we're not out to spite people, we're not trying to be mean, we're not holding grudges, but here's the reality, like, our approach is to always love people first to treat them how we want to be treated, to extend the olive branch, to give them the benefit of the doubt, to be empathetic with their situation, to do everything in our power to make it right. But sometimes you have to press the blacklist button. Hey, if you enjoyed this episode, I know this was a little bit different of an episode. I've never seen this kind of a system before, so I just wanted to share what we do on it. If you want to implement it, please follow me on Instagram at Josh Coffey. That's Josh and then C-O-F-F-Y. Follow me on Instagram. Let me know if you built the blacklist or you're building your blacklist asshole button so that I know you're also building that alongside us. And if you enjoyed this on YouTube, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if you're on an audio podcast, it would mean the world to us if you just spent like 13 and a half seconds and you rated the podcast with your thumb and it helps to get in the hands of other entrepreneurs. We appreciate you and we will see you in the next episode.